Let's talk about facsimile issue comics. Hi, welcome to Garage Geek. So facsimile comics are not new. They've been going strong for about a year and a half. More and more comics are being reprinted in this format. It's not the first format that is a reprint format. I'm going to go over a little bit of the history. It's certainly not going to be a comprehensive history, but I'll show you some examples. And then I'll talk about a little bit about the controversy and where I stand. Before we get into the modern reprints, let's look at the history, some history, of reprints and comics. I'm gonna mostly use Marvel because I have a bunch of them. Now the biggest one is probably gonna be Marvel Tales which reprinted Amazing Spider-Man. For example, Marvel Tales would often come up with new covers. Even though it was a reprint series, you could often get new covers and it was a inexpensive way of getting back issues but you also got some new art. So for example, this is Marvel Tales number 14 back when it would reprint a bunch of different stories. Later, you can see that they, they changed it to just reflect what was going on in this issue. Notice this is number 157. They actually cycled back and started reprinting the same issues again. So here, this one is number 14, and this one is number 157. You could see that they changed the images in the boxes to reflect the content of the comic. Here's another example of where the artwork is possibly different or a different color. The Fantastic Four also had a reprint series called Marvel's Greatest Comics, often with new or different art. The Mighty Thor had a short-lived one called Marvel Spectacular. The X-Men had a reprint series, but what was interesting about this series, they would reprint the issue, but then they would have a backup story that would go deeper. And the backup story was created years after, but re would reflect something that happened within that time period of the comic. Later, these backup stories were collected into two complete collection comics called X-Men Classic. Here's another type that DC put out. Marvel has also put out this type where they would have some kind of border or banner. And this is the type that I dislike. Another more recent type are the dollar comics that many companies have been uh, releasing and I will show some images there. So here we have again a Marvel Tales reprinting a Spider-Man, an amazing Spider-Man. So this is a reprint and now what we have is the modern day facsimile. So this is an exact replica reprint of the original comic including all the ads. Now that's something new that these didn't have. These were modern comics at the time with the, the ads were all changed. Sometimes even the content could have been changed. They could leave out a page or two to fit the changing times and reflecting how much paper is being used per issue. But these facsimile issues are exactly the same except for the price. I have this original issue of Giant Size Defenders number three, which cost 50 cents. And then the facsimile edition, it's the same in every way except for there is this barcode and then the price is different. Since I have these out, let's talk about one disadvantage to facsimile editions, which we will also go over later. Sometimes the format can be changed. So if you notice, the original has a square bound, but they don't keep the same format. This one is rounded. Many older comics look gorgeous in these facsimile editions. But one thing that they're doing is older comics were much larger. In fact, if you go to buy boards and backing boards for older comics, you actually have to buy a different type. So that means when you get a modern reprint, they are actually making the artwork a little bit smaller. And plus they have this barcode along the front. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show off a few of the facsimile editions that reprint older comics. So here's the first of appearance of Iron Man, the first appearance of Hawkeye. We have a reprint of a Fantastic Four annuals. Look at the cover, the annual. Look at the colors on that. They pop. So that is going to lead me to the next advantage. Now, older comics are just that, old, and many of them are faded. And so when you get a reprint, I mean, look at the color difference there. Look at the Hulk here versus here. Now, not all older comics are faded to this degree, but most of them are. And so when you get a brand new comic like this, this art just pops. Here's another example of that. 
This is the original. This is the, the facsimile edition. So let's come to another advantage. To buy an Amazing Spider-Man number one or this annual, this is, as I've said before, this is possibly one of the greatest issues ever put out in a comic book form. If you want me to go over why, please put that in the comments and I will go over this issue. These things in mint condition will possibly cost you a million dollars. I... I do not know the exact price of an Amazing Spider-Man number one or an or a Amazing Fantasy 15 that's also uh, been reprinted. First of all, mint copies can't be found. They're just, their comics weren't treated back then the way they are now. And it's been 60, 70 years since this was first put out. It's aged and faded. So even the best kept comics are not going to be in this mint condition. Even a very, very nice copy of this could possibly be a million or more. There's Dazzler number one. This is a more modern comic that's easier to find, but this is a reprint. I mean, a facsimile edition reprint. Here's also a modern comic that is, you know, more easy to find. Same with this one. But the interesting thing about these is that even though they're modern, the prices on these have skyrocketed. So reprinting these for a young collector or even someone like myself is a, is a really nice thing to do so that modern collectors can have these key issues without breaking their banks. Some more re uh, facsimile issues, Alpha Flight number one, John Byrne, uh, Morbius, Amazing Spider-Man 101. This is a, a really sought after key and the first appearance of the Punisher. And that one is very, very expensive. One disadvantage of facsimile editions is that once a comic book has been reprinted, maybe the other one will drop in value because now, since this is available, not many or not as many people will actually pay the price for this one. That might be true, but for a collector like me, I, I definitely like that this is available. I do know that if there is a comic like this one that is a sought after key, then people are still going to want it in their collection despite there being a facsimile. And in fact, for me, I would actually like to sell this one because I have this one now and I do not need to have this. And I, I would rather use the money that I get from this to invest in comics that aren't available for uh, that haven't been reprinted. Conversely, I don't want to sell this one. This one isn't, you know, that expensive. And this is one of the key comics that I had as a kid. And for nostalgia reasons, I want to keep this. But I'm absolutely delighted that this one is available. So there you have it. The, the pros and the cons of the reprint comic market as I see them. This video has been made by other people, but I just wanted to put my two cents into the arena. Most people want pristine comics as much as they possibly can and originals. And that is a certain type of collector that, that I am not. Also, many comic collectors are only after key issues. That means those are the ones that are important. And I totally understand that, but that's that's not me. I am so happy that issues like these are being reprinted so that I don't have to worry about paying a couple hundred dollars for a Spider-Man issue that I don't have. I would love to hear your thoughts on this issue, even if you're not a comic book collector. Thank you. I'd love to hear your comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you, what do you think about this controversy? Do facsimile editions devaluate the, the costs of the original? In the vinyl community, many albums are being repressed. Does that devaluate the, the cost of the original? Usually it doesn't, right? They're still sought after first pressings. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this issue. And again, I want to thank you for the support.